Hello everyone, glad to be back. Today is 11th of October, now it's 10 to 12 in the morning Moscow time. I'm Levan Gudadze and this is my first update for a day in which I will share all the main news that are making headlines in Russian media outlets and Russian language pages on different internet platforms. Second update will be a little bit late in the afternoon on my Patreon page in which I will share additional news that will be reported by Russian media and also some ideas about future developments of uh, our project. Hopefully Patreon community will find it uh, interesting. And uh, also let me address several uh, also uh, let me address several uh, important topics before I start talk about uh, news uh, which is that yesterday yesterday uh, first time on our channel we had we had uh, guests um, hosts of uh, the Duran the Duran channel and and then show uh, and their own personal channels, uh, Alex Christoforo and Alexander Mercuris. Many of you, of course, uh, uh, see that live stream. It already has uh, 29 sorry, thousand views, which is record for our channel. Previous record was 18,000, so we break a record. And uh, of course, uh, thanks to you and thanks to Alexander. Alexander uh, immensely uh, grateful immensely grateful of course for for this attention to our community to all of you and of course to alexander uh, alexander that they did manage to find time in their very busy schedule to have a conversation with us i did uh, try to conduct a blitz interview type uh, of conversation because there were, i had i don't know man, about 50 questions about many many different uh, topics but, and although it was impossible to ask all the questions we did have a conversation about of course middle east ukraine relationships between russia and uh, and the western states uh, also brics the dollarization brics currency uh, situation in southern caucasus regions and and many more uh, and many more interesting topics uh, uh, Alexander, Alexander, they, their opinion is always interesting on uh, on any topic, really. And uh, well, hopefully, sometime in the future, I will have an opportunity once again to uh, interview interview them. And uh, well, when it comes to uh, future interviews, as I promised from the beginning, I will try to make uh, at least uh, one interview during the live stream on weekly. Uh, basis and uh, well ne for next week I think to uh, communicate with uh, Scott Ritter a well-known military expert uh, from USA voice of reason of course like uh, Alexander uh, Alexander and uh, hopefully it will work out hopefully it will work out and uh, if so then next week we may have a conversation with um, with Scott Reader, that will be a great of course and before i start talk about news now sorry sorry dear friends for a long intro but let me thank uh, new members of our community we have uh, more than 400 new members since that uh, live stream since uh, last yesterday's live stream and uh, i welcome all new members to our tiny but very friendly community uh, hopefully they will like it here and stay uh, especially friendliness of our community and almost in complete absence of toxicity which is on its own is achievement uh, especially in these difficult times when emotions are very high and which is achievement of, of you dear friends uh, members of our community that despite these high emotions we are managing to have a uh, proper conversation uh, with, re with respect despite differences in um, opinion that's been said that's been said let's talk about uh, a news now uh, once again sorry for a long uh, intro but but i had to address these topics and uh, well let me begin with the um, with the short summary of the situation on the battlefield ukrainian battlefield and of course main main news are coming from South Donetsk sector of the front line from Avdevka area because uh, yesterday almost all day long and during the night time Russian armed forces were conducting 
local scale offensive operations in direction of Avdevka. And as a result, this city is now definitely in operational encirclement. Some experts are even using term in as a cold room, which is a strong uh, uh, characteristic for, for a situation. But, uh, well, uh, it, it does look like a cold room for sure, because all the roads that are going into or out of Abdevka are under 100% Russian fire control. And it's going to be extremely difficult for garnison, Ukrainian garnison of Avdevka and surrounding areas to hold on to their positions. Well, yesterday's operations, and I did share many, many videos, by the way, on my Telegram uh, and many, many news on my Telegram page. Uh, if you are not subscribed, you can see link under this video in the description box or in the pinned comment. With the uh, Russian offensive operations, uh, it was combined operation with uh, with ground forces, um, uh, airstrikes, uh, active use of uh, attack helicopters. I did share that video, quite uh, uh, quite interesting video with Mi-28 helicopter gunships uh, attacking almost in point blank range positions of uh, Ukrainian armed forces. I, I see such operation from Russian attack helicopters, uh, I guess, first time when in in such cl close proximity they are operating despite the risks that uh, ukrainian side may may use some uh, some man pads uh, and at least for now at least for now uh, we don't have uh, information that uh, ukrainian forces did man manage to set down any of the helicopters although uh, there are some reports from Ukrainian side that they did manage to shut down one Russian Su-25 uh, attack plane. Russian side did not confirm this information on Russian military pages. I did not see any any such a, any confirmation for this uh, information. So uh, it's uh, it, it may be false, but that's what uh, is reported from Ukrainian side. But anyway, anyway, this operation, this local scale. But significant operation from Russian forces were quite significant, and it may have continuation, of course. And uh, and uh, well, in uh, in several weeks' time, in several weeks' time, we may see total collapse of Ukrainian forces on the southern sector of the on the southern flank of Donetsk sector and the South Donetsk sector entirely. Some military experts already are predicting such a development uh, and uh, even large-scale Russian offensive operations, although I'm a little bit skeptical when it comes to large-scale operations. I think, as I said in previous updates, Russian side will increase pressure on Ukrainian forces step by step on a daily basis and will uh, will prepare ground well enough for uh, large-scale offensive operations, which will take place, in my understanding, during the winter all along the front line. All along the front line, not just on the northern sectors, from let's say Seversk to Kupiansk, where Russian forces also were quite active during the previous 24 hours and were conducting local scale offensive operations, but also on the southern sectors of the front, where Ukrainian side lost completely initiative, and it's uh, Russian side now that are more active, uh, which is uh, quite unusual for last several months uh, since the beginning of the so-called Ukrainian counteroffensive, which is effectively ended, by the way, with a total disaster for Ukrainian armed forces. And as I said quite a few times, I don't think Ukrainian forces will ever be able to regain initiative, not just uh, on the southern sectors of the front line, where this main axis of Ukrainian counteroffensive was, like Zaporozhye and South Donetsk sector, but just any on any of the sectors of the front. Ukrainian armed forces will never ever again initiative is just uh, technically and even theoretically impossible. But when it comes to overall situation on the front line, it's mainly, of course, with the exception of uh, Avdevka, uh, it's mainly still operational uh, pause, local scale skirmishes between the sides, artillery, artillery duels and uh, drone wars, drone wars. But uh, as time goes by, as time goes by, as I said, the Russian side will increase pressure on Ukrainian forces on a daily basis. And uh, I expect in upcoming days or weeks, we will see more and more uh, 
local scale successful Russian operations and uh, I guess several villages and maybe even towns will become under full Russian control before uh, decisive large-scale Russian offensive operations began in the winter. And this is it when it comes to short summary of the situation on the battlefield. I remind you that uh, in the recommendation link under this uh, video, in the description box, you can see many of the channels, links to the channels that are devoting much more time to, to discuss detail, in more detail, situation on the front line. But my program mainly about news, not just about military conflict. So I have to uh, continue with some other, uh, other news. Um, but before I do so, let me remind you that uh, this project with several uh, channels on YouTube, uh, Rumble, Telegram, exist solely thanks to the support of members of our community and I will be immensely grateful if you will also consider to support uh, my work with small donations through PayPal, buy me a coffee or by subscribing to my Patreon page. You can see links on this video in the description box or in the pinned comment. That's been said, let's uh, continue with some uh, additional news and RIA Novosti is reporting exactly about uh, Russian successful operations in Avdevka, in Avdevka area and according to uh, aid of uh, head of uh, DPR, Donetsk People's Republic, Jan Gagin, during the uh, yesterday's offensive operations, Russian side did manage to achieve significant progress and during the battles uh, they did destroy more than 20 pieces of Ukrainian military equipment of course uh, during the day russian defense ministry on daily briefings will share with us additional news and uh, i will report about it on my telegram and uh, next uh, updates let's continue rianost is reporting that uh, as i said russian forces are quite active and increasing pressure on other sectors also and this information confirming this which is about russian air forces attacks uh, on kupiansk direction which is uh, also, by the way, a uh, hotspot, also a hotspot. And uh, when it comes to these northern sectors of the front line, let me show you Kupiansk. So Kupiansk is uh, here, by the way, this is Kupiansk. And when it comes to northern sectors, let's say from Seversk, from here up to Kupiansk and entire Kharkov region, only question at this point that is unanswered is when Russian armed forces will conduct large-scale offensive operations because uh, uh, Ukrainian side has not even slight chance to regain initiative or to conduct successful uh, operations. It all depends now when Russian general staff will begin its uh, large-scale offensive operations. Although, as I said, local-scale offensives are taking place constantly and Russia, Russian side will on daily basis from now on increase pressure on Ukrainian side and whenever on any of the areas Ukrainian forces will crack and flee of course Russian forces will use that opening and uh, probably we will have some local scale breakthroughs also with the uh, with the several settlements that is held at this moment by Ukrainian forces becoming changing hands and becoming under control of Russian army it's just inevitable at this Point. And of course, during the winter, if I'm not mistaken, we will see decisive uh, Russian large-scale offensive operations all along the front line. Let's uh, continue now. And uh, by the way, when it comes to this news, Rianovost is reporting that Russian aviation did conduct 14 strikes on Ukrainian on points of concentration of Ukrainian forces and military equipment in Kupiansk direction. Also, Ria Novosti is reporting that uh, United Kingdom, with its uh, allies, will, uh, will uh, uh, give to Zelensky and his associates additional package of uh, aid, financial and military aid. And uh, this time, uh, you may be a little bit surprised when you hear amount. So this time, we are talking about 100 million uh, pounds. 100 million pounds uh, in, of, in support, in military and, and financial support for Zelensky and uh, his associates, not just from UK, but also from Denmark, Norway, Sweden, uh, Netherlands, Spain and uh, Lithuania. 
100 million dollars. So it seems like uh, less and less instances is reported when uh, talk is about billions. At this point, at this point, uh, it's a hundred, hundreds of million, in this case, hundred million. And I guess it's only a matter of time and uh, we will start talking about some tens of millions. And at some point, there will be no more money or military aid for the regime. That's a trend that is uh, visible, I guess, for everybody at this, at this uh, stage. And of course, as I said quite a few times, uh, it's, it's too obvious. It's too obvious that uh, major capitals in the West, Washington, London, uh, mainly are beginning to distance themselves, especially Washington, by the way. And whatever Washington is doing, of course, these other Western capitals are copying it, this direction. So Washington is a, is a main player, of course, in, in, in the Western world. And it's, it's becoming too obvious that Washington is beginning to distance itself from uh, entire this uh, Ukrainian failure, this Ukrainian crisis, on part of Western so-called elite elites, and uh, this trend will also continue uh, until until uh, complete cut of uh, ties with the regime, which will definitely happen once, uh, approximately at the time when uh, NATO member states will begin uh, will begin. Uh, sending their military personnel in the western regions of uh, Ukraine and establishing control over the, these territories. Poland, uh, Hungary, Romania and uh, possibly Slovakia. With, with support of some other NATO members also, but when it comes to territories itself, it's uh, Poland, Hungary and Romania that have some claims on western regions of, on some parts of western regions of, of Ukraine and maybe Slovakia also will have some claims and uh, well that's the inevitable path that ukraine is headed and uh, i don't think uh, anything may stop this uh, fail of ukraine in this in this direction at this at this point ria Novost is uh, reporting that belgium will deliver to ukraine first bunch of uh, f-16s in 2025 so remember, uh, I was always saying that Zelensky will, despite all these statements about F-16s and, and, and some other Western-made fighter jets, I was always uh, saying that uh, as never uh, Zelensky or his associates will have uh, any real control over the Western fighter jets. And I guess this information is confirmation of my reading of big picture. In 2025, by the way, there will be no Ukraine on political map. So Belgium may leadership of Belgium may made uh, any statement they want or like, but they will definitely don't deliver any F-16s to Ukraine in 2025 because there will be no such a state on the political map for that moment. Uh, this conflict will end in 2024. Uh, we have uh, all the indicators to think that this conflict will will end uh, in 2024, somewhere around the uh, summertime, I guess. Uh, but let's see, let's see. Uh, also, TAS News Agency is reporting about statements that Grossi, Rafael Grossi, head of IAEA International Atomic Energy, did uh, made during his interview with the British uh, Guardian. And he said, by the way, during this interview, that in private conversation, Zelensky did told him that uh, he cannot guarantee that there will be no uh, operations in the direction of Zaporozhye nuclear power plant. Zelensky said that they can be and there will be operations in the direction of Zaporozhye nuclear power plants. And Grossi, who's supposed to be a neutral player in this uh, always, by the way, not just in this case, but always, because he's head of international organization. And Grossi, this individual, just now saying about it, when uh, after statements of Budanov, after statements of Kirill Budanov, 
head of Ukraine's military intelligence, who basically acknowledged that they did try three times at least to conduct military operation in the direction of Zaporozhye nuclear power plant and failed. And uh, as you remember, Russian side was always uh, sharing information about these provocations about Zaporozhye nuclear power plant and IAEA never even once, this individual, Rafael Grossi, never even once mentioned this in his statements, that Ukrainian side was endangering entire Europe with nuclear disaster by attacking Zaporozhye nuclear power plant. That's the type of individual that he is. And that's why I said, man, IAEA don't deserve any respect, like Grossi himself, and any trust. This, is, this organization is a tool of uh, Western so-called elites, and uh, it's, it's too obvious at this point. And by this statement from Rafael Grossi today, after statements of uh, Budanov, he just confirmed exactly what I'm saying, that he is a puppet of the so-called Western elites, and IAEA as an organization cannot be trusted. That's too simple. But anyway, let's continue. Uh, head of Russian, Ria Novosti is reporting that head of Russian FSB security uh, service did make statement during his uh, during the conference, uh, and I did share this information also on my Telegram. And let me read it uh, a few phrases from here. So. Uh, the plans of uh, Ukrainian uh, and uh, Great Britain to commit uh, sabotage at the Russian nuclear power plants should be qualified as nuclear terrorism, said the chairman of the Council of Heads of Security Agencies and Special Services, SDRB, of the CIC member states. CIC is... Um, uh, SNG, by the way, this is an organization that was built uh, by former Soviet Union uh, republics. And heads of uh, security services had a meeting, and uh, during this meeting, uh, this statement was made by head of Russian FSB, Alexander Bortnikov. So I guess, I guess after this statement, it's, it's obvious that uh, UK and the uh, United Kingdom still have plans, still have plans to conduct provocation against Zaporozhye nuclear power plant and this topic is extremely important especially now because since the escalation in the Middle East we all see uh, that Ukraine Ukrainian topic is almost gone from uh, from talking points of their uh, Western so-called elites and from Western media outlets and uh, of course Zelensky and his associates are not happy about it and they may conduct and their masters in the in the West, uh, neocons who want to continue this confrontation with Russia as long as possible, they are not happy and they may conduct some large-scale provocation in Ukraine, or 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 or, or maybe not just in Ukraine, uh, to to gain attention again, to gain attention again. And one of the directions where Ukrainian side and and the United Kingdom in these matters may uh, conduct provocation can be uh, Zaporozhye nuclear power plant, of course. And well, if uh, head of Russian FSB is, 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 is talking about this topic, then I guess Russian side is as prepared as possible to, uh, to deal with the uh, threats that are coming from uh, Kiev in London in this regard, at least, you know, uh, we can hope for, hope for this. And uh, by the way, Rian is uh, also reporting, this is quite interesting, uh, Zelensky was in Romania, and maybe he is still in Romania for this time, but yesterday he definitely was in, in Romania. And, uh, and according to this report from Rian which is based on uh, Romanian media, a portal G4 Media, Romanian parliament made decision to not conduct session on a day when Zelensky is in Romania so that uh, Zelensky would not speak to Romanian parliament. Uh, well, good for Romania, by the way. 
good for Romania if this is the true and the Romanian parliament denies Zelensky uh, basically to make his uh, speech good for Romania because uh, well and the one more indicator if this is true that uh, uh, world world is tired from uh, from Zelensky and his regime by the way and uh, and not just a world outside the west but even western bloc even members of western bloc are tired of uh, all this including from uh, with Zelensky no one wants to see him no more anyway anyway let's uh, continue although openly not not that many people are saying this but uh, actions are speak also and also interesting news Ariana Wosta is reporting about statements that Colonel Douglas McGregor did made during his uh, interview on uh, YouTube channel uh, Godfrey Bloom official when he was asked about uh, about uh, UK's and uh, general in, in general NATO instructors in Ukraine where these instructors are and the answer of uh, Douglas McGregor was um, very straight Russian side sees movement on all entire territory of Ukraine and uh, and striking and striking all the points of concentration of uh, foreigners foreign mercenaries including these uh, instructors that are uh, sent uh, into ukraine by nato member states although officially they are denying this and by the way just recently one of the biggest russian channel if i'm not mistaken it was rebirth did reported that uh, it's already known two cases two cases when russian side when exchange did took place between uh, exchange of prisoners and uh, and uh, and uh, and failed soldiers bodies of failed soldiers between russian side and ukrainian side and at least in two occasions uh, russian side uh, give to ukrainian side uh, uh, bodies of uh, sas fighters and sas is uh, uh, top special force in ukraine and uh, and one of the best in the in the world so it's uh, Colonel McGregor is definitely uh, right when he uh, says that uh, Russian side is il eliminating uh, these Western uh, so-called instructors on on regular uh, basis. But anyway, let's continue. And next topic, next topic is Israel, where situation is continuing to escalate and we have a task news agency's report that uh, uh, which is based on statements of uh, Yoav, Yoav Galat Galat uh, uh, head of uh, defense uh, forces of Israel uh, head of Israeli army basically that uh, uh, IDF is beginning large-scale offensive operation in the Gaza Strip that was stated yesterday Although this morning I did check reports from uh, from uh, Israel and Palestine, and there was no single information that uh, Israeli armed forces began ground operation in the Gaza. There are some reports that uh, several units of uh, IDF, possibly special forces, are entering Gaza Strip and conducting some local uh, operations, but nothing in the large scale. Nothing in the large scale. And yesterday, by the way uh military analyst of uh, build german media outlet did wrote did report that uh, uh idf uh, is israeli armed forces basically israeli defense forces are planning uh ground operation in gaza strip with a hundred thousand with with the initial hundred thousand force on on first stage and uh according to this uh this uh, military um, analyst of uh, build this operation should begin some in, in, in 24 hours 
but at least for now at least for now despite uh, all the reports and statements uh we did not see a uh, big ground operation large-scale ground op operation of israel and let's hope there will be no ground operation by the way because it it's gonna be a total disaster it's gonna be a disaster first of all for civilians of of gaza and it's uh, more than two million civilians we are talking about and it's gonna be a disaster for uh for uh, israeli army also because if if, if anybody thinks that uh, you know idf will uh enter gaza strip and it's gonna be easy walk no this person is mistaken whoever thinks that way because uh, it, according to many reports hamas and other groups that are operating in gaza strip had have about forty thousand fighters and area itself is extremely densely populated so it, it's 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 all uh, it's 100 percent urban combat which is uh on its own uh, some next level difficulty operation uh so i don't know let's let's hope this conflict will end and and the world community will will not allow further escalation otherwise uh, otherwise uh both sides may end up in uh, in absolute disaster and of course whenever we are talking about conflict uh, first of all we are thinking about civilians and ground operation of israeli army may be a total disaster and it, it may force hundreds of thousands of civilians or maybe even millions to flee gaza strip for uh, for egypt or maybe for west bank or, or lebanon or jordan if uh, israel will open humanitarian corridors and eventually gaza strip may uh become uh, uh, empty from from locals all the locals may be forced to flee this uh, region which will be of course a human tragedy uh, and crime against humanity but anyway let's uh, let's uh, continue um, at least for now dear friends we we don't have an indicator indications that um, escalation may take place between israel and hezbollah or israel and iran which is a, a good good sign good sign that they will be at least uh, they will not, not be regional scale of escalation but when it comes to gaza strip when it comes to gaza strip it's nothing is known yet and it's well me well, well may be that uh, israeli side has some plans to empty entire gaza destroy entire gaza and force basically local residents to flee this region and next news is uh, tas from tas news agency about uh, mobilization of reservists by israeli side and uh, in this information uh, tas news agency is reporting about 300,000 reservists that uh, was called called up mainly from european states and as you know uh, citizens of israel no matter where they are living can be called even if they have double citizenship and uh, these 300,000 reservists will uh, go to israel mainly from uh, europe and israel already made a statement israeli side that uh, they will provide uh, they will provide uh, uh, planes planes for uh, uh, redeployment of these reservists into into israel and yesterday i did share my telegram some videos with uh, with military planes in europe that and and some reservists that are boarding these planes to uh, go to israel so process is already on the way but same time we have some other reports that uh, some 360,000 reservists were called up so numbers are different but in any ways it's a big number it's uh, 300 or 360 or 400,000 it's a big number i remind you that even according to western uh, so-called elites and western media outlets russian side began its special military operation with about 150,000 military personnel uh, and the uh, question is why israel needs 
300 and or 360,000 military personnel uh, maybe exactly to conduct uh, this ground operation this ground operation in Gaza Strip and uh, basically uh, as a result of hostilities force local residents to flee this territory maybe Netanyahu and his government thinks that this is the way to deal with the issue of Gaza Strip just to force everyone from the, that, that area out and uh, well we all know that uh, Netanyahu is a, is a right wing and his supporters mainly are right wing and they can do this I mean I don't think anybody will be surprised if they will conduct such a or if they have such plans let's continue Ria Novost is uh, reporting that uh, Hamas made a statement Hamas made a statement about its uh, operation and uh, and uh, in this statement they articulated that operation that they conducted was a preventive measure because they had the intelligence that Israeli side was planning to conduct some uh, operations against Gaza Strip against leadership of Gaza Strip and Hamas according to their own statements had no other option other than conduct this preemptive uh, preemptive strike uh, it's up to us if we will believe in this uh, information uh, if we take in account uh, low pace of uh, mobilization of uh, Israeli army low uh, speed of uh, low speed of reaction of I I Israeli security forces on developments uh, that took place uh, in, in Israel a few days ago it did not make uh, you think that uh, Israeli had uh, already built up some military uh, groups and they were conducting some operations they did not it, it don't at least to me the, this statement don't seems realistic but anyway who knows who knows uh, maybe Israeli secret services had some plans without involving in their operations uh, even leadership of Tzahal or IDF uh, um, of Israel that's a possibility of course because uh, I don't think uh, Hamas or or other secret services of uh, Israel are sharing uh, their uh, informations about the operations with uh, even with leadership of uh, Israeli army but anyway, let's uh, let's continue. Ria Novosti is reporting that according to uh, according to officials from Israel, uh, more than twelve hundred people, twelve hundred uh, people died in Israel as a result of uh, Hamas strikes after this uh, escalation. Uh, huge number, huge number. 1200 uh, and this is civilians by the way because uh, defense ministries usually don't really share information this is uh, uh, civilians that we are talking about uh, tragedy of course for uh, Israel for Israeli society and um, also tragedy is taking place in um, in uh, Gaza Strip and according to Ministry of Health of uh, uh, Pal Palestine 900 civilians died in Palestinian territories as a result of Israeli strikes and these numbers are of um, unfortunately uh, not final these numbers are increasing as time goes by because hostilities are not not stopping it's it's a tragedy what is taking place in uh, in any war by the way in any war it's a uh, it's first of all it's a uh, human tragedy because people are losing just ordinary innocent people are losing everything it's horrifying though Maria Novosti is uh, reporting that president of Turkey Erdogan did made statement about uh, situation in Israel and during this statement he said that Hamas lost uh, about 750 uh, its uh, military personnel its fighters and uh, about 2000 
fighters are winded. This is first time, I guess, when some numbers are uh, coming from official level, even though not from not uh, from Palestine, but in this case from Turkey. It's still, it's a uh, president of Turkey is talking about. So he probably has, uh, not probably, definitely has uh, good intelligence knowledge about situation and uh, well uh, israeli side did report that they destroy uh, more than 1500 uh, palestinian fighters and now we have statement from erdogan who says that um, 750 fighters were lost on side of uh, hamas and by the way yesterday afternoon there was an incident on the border between israel and uh, and uh, Syria, or to be more precise, on Syrian territory, on the border between uh, uh, occupied by Israel Syrian territory and uh, Syria in Golan Heights, there were some shelling. Uh, reports are different from, from different sides, of course, but according to Israeli side, there were some shelling from Syria and they respond with the uh, fire of artillery and uh, tanks. In direction from where this mortar fire was opened but according to according to arab media uh, israel uh, unprovokedly opened fire in direction of uh, territory syrian territories that is controlled by uh, syrian government uh, these days by the way we should always remember that the palestinian uh, refugee camps are uh, in every country that borders Israel, in uh, in Lebanon, in Syria, in Jordan, and uh, in uh, Egypt, and in these uh, camps, and these camps are basically like uh, settlements, like cities. It's not like tents are there. It's uh, it's for decades and decades, uh, these territories did become uh, enclaves of Palestinians. It's a, it's a, it's a cities, small cities. And different groups are operating uh, in these cities. Political and military groups are operating in these cities. And yesterday, when this incident occurred between Israel and uh, Syria, Islamic Jihad did uh, take a claim for that uh, shelling of Israeli territory from Syria, if I'm not mistaken. That was Islamic Jihad group. It, and it has nothing to do with... Uh, serious uh, regular armed forces they are not involved in this confrontation in in any way shape or form and also by the way there were some reports about skirmishes uh, between israeli and hezbollah forces on the border but yet again no no indicator that uh, hezbollah is planning to get involved in this confrontation with full force but when it comes to local scale skirmishes on the border regions, that's a possibility and it definitely take happening. We don't have to guess. This local scale, some clashes are taking uh, taking place as I as I expected and as I reported in in previous updates. Um, also. Ria Novosti is reporting that according to Russian embassy in Israel, it's already known that four Russian citizens died uh, during this escalation in, uh, in Israel. And unfortunately, uh, this, there is high risk that uh, there will be more casualties among Russian citizens that were guests in Israel or in Palestine. And uh, let's uh, talk about some other news also. Other topics. Let me check how long is this video. It's 44 minutes already. Okay, several news, several news. I will go at least uh, through headlines. So Rianovost is reporting that France is... Uh, France French uh, forces did begin to flee Niger. Uh, this information is the second... Uh, and it's reported by France uh, France Press. It's the second time that we see such reports from France Press. Uh, uh, previous week also, there were reports that uh, French forces are leaving Niger, but uh, then 
some other sources said that uh, this information is incorrect and now yet again france press is writing that french uh, military personnel begin uh, removing uh, its uh, french army did began to remove its personnel from niger this time probably it's correct because i don't think france press will second time publish uh, uh, wrong information about same topic so probably this is true and french uh, bases very soon become under full control of uh, niger forces also ria Novosti's report about statements from prime minister of armenia nikol pashinyan who uh, reacted on some rumors that are spreading inside armenia that uh, russian side shut down its uh, market for uh, armenian companies and Pashinyan did uh, made statement that this information is false. Russian side did not shut down its borders or its market. Nothing uh, like that is uh, happening. And after all, Armenia is a part of Eurasian uh, Economical Union, and uh, reg uh, and relationships, economical relationships between the countries are regulated uh, by this uh, organization, and it's uh, it's simply impossible to shut down markets uh, as easy as some may think in in armenia but i can understand why armenian business uh, armenian society may have some worries uh, to lose a russian market because of this uh, difficult relationships between current leadership of armenia and moscow but russian foreign ministry uh, high-ranking russian officials did made statements many times that despite this, uh, despite this uh, difficult relationships between Moscow and Yerevan at this point, Russian side will do everything it can to maintain a uh, brotherly relationship with the Armenian society. So that's the answer for you. I don't think Russian side will uh, shut down its uh, market for Armenian business. Why? Why? It will harm... Uh, economy of Armenia, it will harm ordinary people, not Pashinyan. And Moscow has some issues with Pashinyan, isn't it? So uh, in this case, in this case, Pashinyan is uh, not wrong when he's saying that Russia did not close its uh, market. He's rarely, rarely right, Pashinyan. And uh, in, this is the exactly instance when he's uh, correct, quite rare instance Ria Novost is uh, reporting that uh, head of NATO by the way Ian Stoltenberg this this another uh, strange individual in this uh, bunch of so-called elites of the West did made statement about pipeline gas pipeline that uh, broke down between Estonia and uh, and Finland and he said that if investigation will conclude that it was uh, uh, direct attack or intended attack on pipeline NATO will respond with uh, with strongly and uh, with unity and so on just uh, <coughs> just crazy talk another day another crazy talk from Jans uh, Stoltenberg uh, yesterday I did report in yesterday's update about this pipeline between Estonia and uh, and uh, uh, Finland uh, and uh, representative of Finnish energy company did said that despite this issue on the pipeline uh, in which pressure is 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 uh, uh, not significant enough which indicates leak in the pipeline despite that uh, sites are managing to fulfill uh, their obligations contracts and uh, gas has been delivered anyway probably there are some other means for this and uh, but but i said yesterday that uh, of course western so-called elites can use this topic to speculate and to once again pour some more fuel into this uh, uh, russophobic hysteria and anti-russian hysteria and uh, stoltenberg does exactly that when he says in if this was intended action then who who is talking about even if he did not say directly russia of course 
he's uh, pointing at Russia and uh, trying to, you know, somehow pour some more fuel into this fire of uh, madness and the name of Russophobia that is uh, holding Europe in, in, in hostage, by the way, at this point. Anyway, let's uh, continue. When it comes to this pipeline itself, it's some local local pipeline. Who cares about it, man? If Russia wanted to answer or retaliate for Nord Stream pipelines, the Russian side will probably find something similar in importance, in, the, in scale. Not some local freaking pipeline between Estonia and Finland. Who cares, man, about Finland and Estonia or their pipelines? I mean, really. Not even fin Finnish people and Estonian people care about uh, all this story or pipelines, man. But anyway, anyway, let's uh, let's continue. Nowadays, everyone thinks that, uh, or the so-called elites probably in all the countries in the West are think that they are like center of universe, but they are not. And in Russia, nobody cares about them. Just nobody. At least in Russia and in the world, in the wider world, uh, outside of uh, outside of uh, Western states, people are living their lives, man. No one cares about these crazy Western elites and their stupid uh, uh, ideas. But anyway, Ria Novosti is reporting that. Uh, International Monetary Fund, International Monetary Fund made uh, improved uh, prediction on uh, rise of on, of Russian GDP this year from 1.5 percent to 2.2 percent, uh, which is uh, well quite a good number, quite a good number. Let's say some optimistic Russian. Uh, some optimistic uh, forecast for for increase of of uh, russian gdp is about uh, amounting to 2.7 percent um, 2.2 percent is uh, is a more of a conservative estimate so i guess russian economy eventually will will increase uh, about 2.4 2.5 percent for sure in uh, in annual terms which is uh, yet again which is uh, quite interesting and surprising uh, taking account all this pressure and and sanctions and so on that was imposed on russia by these so-called western elites so yes good news for russian uh, economy russian society and russia that economy is holding by the way not just holding but managing to uh, develop weather and this is it for now this is it for now hopefully you will find this update interesting plenty of news plenty of news and uh, well if you find it interesting please uh, please click that like button or leave some commentary about uh, any topic you find interesting um, this way i may have uh, better chances to deal with the youtube's extremely aggressive algorithm and reach wider audience and for very same reason if you can please share links to my uh, uh, to my channel or my videos with your friends on any of the platforms that uh, you are active on and yes this is it this is it for now um, thank you very much for your attention uh, have a great day and take care.